Hey viewers, what's up? And welcome back to another episode of Deeper in a Different Brains. We are still continuing with our topic of ADHD as we already have been through all of the news articles relating to the topic and the Week in Neurodiversity videos. Today's episode is geared towards all of the blog articles that we have on ADHD. We have 30 blog articles written by a variety of authors on a variety of topics relating back to the main topic of ADHD. I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of each article to give you a deeper insight of all of the information that we have available. So our first blog featured on the website is written by Ali Idris, which is our own ADHD self-advocate on five tools for helping college students with ADHD. Next up, occupational optics creator Lee D. Stockner discusses the role piano playing can have in reducing anxiety and the importance of achieving the flow. Let's look at Lisa Berman as she discusses some of the common sensory challenges experienced by neurodiverse students. As coronavirus is the topic of conversation for many people today, we have the coronavirus pandemic, Ollie's story, and his journey with ADHD and OCD. Next up, we have neurodiverse in the open, to self-identify or to not. Chris Brady discusses the pros and cons of forcing neurodivergent individuals to self-identify and share their diagnosis. Sticking with the topic of the pandemic, we have how to survive a pandemic with your bright but quirky child, tips from a psychologist slash mother. Wendy Blumenthal offers 10 tips for parenting exceptional children during a pandemic. If you're looking for some COVID resources during this pandemic, we have neurodiversity and COVID-19, a message from our founder, and our growing list of COVID-19 resources for different brains. Next up, Denise Brody shares the challenges of women with learning disabilities. Both hiding and sharing their diagnosis can have an effect on them. As the holiday seasons are rolling around, this article is perfect for traveling with neurodiverse children. Jessica Leaving identifies these stressors and gives you some tips for handling them. Now this article is from our founder, Hacky Reitman, as he discusses evolving different brains, ADHD technology, and the paradox, in which he discusses a recent study that finding the use of technology can lead to increasing ADHD diagnosis and what it means for all of our different brains. As some of us would like a parent's perspective, this is one parent's view on neurodiversity. Cheryl Fox discusses how her daughter's diagnosis of autism has changed her life. Next up, Brian Udell, MD, discusses what to expect from biomedical treatment of ADHD and autism. Dr. Jacqueline Davis discusses the use of neurofeedback for ADHD, autism, depression, and anxiety. Sean Smith takes a look at how Rudolph is the perfect example of neurodiversity, as he believes it spoke as an individual with a different brain. Another ADHD parent shares their story of choosing your own path. Lacey Craddock discusses how picking battles carefully helped her have peace and helped maximize the potential and self-esteem of her neurodiverse child. Next up, how do you measure positive impact? The challenges of advocating for neurodiversity. Canadian ADHD and neurodiversity advocate Sean Smith reflects on how a recent presentation at a conference reinforced his concept of how to measure the positive impact of his work. Continuing with the topic of assessing different brains, this article by Tammy Alkin discusses the journey of finding proper educational assistance led her to develop a tool for assessing individuals with different brains. Next up, this article discusses getting a second opinion on ADHD diagnosis, as Julie discusses the importance of getting second opinions. This next article by Debbie Hanton asks the question, is it a behavior or a brain problem? She discusses how it might look like impulsive, irresponsible, selfish, disorganized, or unmotivated behavior may be a result of the problem in the brain. Lacey Craddock, an ADHD parent, discusses comfort levels and ADHD. She goes into deeper of the challenges of having a neurodiverse child and the challenges they may face growing up, as well as the concern parents may have while safeguarding their child through that process. Next up, Cheryl Checkers identifies how weaknesses in the executive function of the brain can create problems for the neurodiverse and reviews strategies on how to improve those functions. Continuing with this topic, Juliana Fenwick discusses the executive functions of the brain and how she believes directed massage can aid in issues with cognitive control. Now we have something a little interesting. Our self-advocate Roland Jung has a three-part series which he discusses his ongoing battles with ADHD and things that happen in his own life. He concludes his series with the third part being the Adderall debate, life before and after his diagnosis. In an interesting excerpt from her book, Lori Bittar discusses how she helped one student fight their ADHD battles through drumming. As music seems to be a big form of therapy for a lot of people, Dr. Jennifer Jo Brout speaks with Dr. Dorita Berger about the various benefits that music therapy can have on people with ADHD, PTSD, autism, and many other diagnoses. This blog takes another approach as it analyzes simple steps for massaging away meltdowns in the neurodiverse, in which just a few simple techniques will bring someone back to the parasympathetic state, their heart rate slows, blood pressure lowers, and breathing is deeper and calmer. Another blog from our advocate, Sean Smith, in which he analyzes the multiple types of ADHD and how the characteristics differ between the different types. 
And finally, our first ever article on ADHD by Dr. Brian Udell, in which he discusses the differential diagnosis of ADHD. So that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you go on our website and check out all the different blogs that we have on ADHD. I truly think they're all so interesting and brings in a whole bunch of different perspectives as there's so many different authors. Please feel free to comment, like, share, DM us if you wanna be involved with this series in any way possible. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time as we conclude all the video resources that we have on ADHD. For more information, visit us at differentbrains.org.